we want to turn our attention to the uh, actual season itself, the Gaelic football season and what's going to happen. And I'm delighted to say Michael Meehan and, and the McGinley are with us this morning. Um, gents, you're both very welcome. We had planned this, that uh, we were going to talk about events on the field, but unfortunately events off the field, particularly in the last 24 hours, seem to have escalated quickly, particularly um, in the border counties. And um, Andy, you might talk to us a little bit about what the situation feels like uh, up there. I think a lot of people will realise that um, the north has gone into fairly significant lockdown, that the uh, border counties have gone from level three to level four in Donegal and um, uh, I don't want to get this wrong, it's uh, Monaghan and Cavan, I think, have gone from level three to level four. So there's significant fear amongst the GAA community uh, about the games going ahead in one side and then that the games might not go ahead on the other side. What, what's, what's your feeling at the moment? Yeah, I suppose, look, it's, it's split between the social aspect and the sporting aspect. For me, I'm in lockdown personally myself. I, my, my own daughter uh, tested positive, although she's, she's fit and well, but four out of her class of 16 uh, ha had it this week. So it is very much in our communities, and so everybody's sort of getting on with life. The, the sport thing, particularly the inter-county thing, was going to be a lovely distraction, but you, you just can't get away from COVID. So uh, from a sporting point of view, it seems strange that it, it could go ahead. The whole elite status for me is queryable enough because the elite sports from what I can understand, they're testing regularly and they're expecting their athletes to be in sort of protective bubbles. But from a GA point of view, everybody's heading home to their families, heading home to their jobs on, on the Monday morning and going through their jobs and then meeting up at training. So uh, that, that, that bit sort of is a wee bit con conflicting for me. But I suppose like everybody else, you want to see some action happening. The fact that things have graded upwards uh, is hardly surprising, really, for anybody. Every trend line going over the past month has only been going in one direction. So, and and we all know the measures that it took in March to slow and put the brakes down. And we all know that sitting at level three, or the the restrictions that we had previously up up here, it's nowhere near the way people embraced them back in March when it was the full lockdown. So, if it took that to put the brakes on it in March. I don't think many in, in full conscience thought that we were going to see a major halt on, on rising numbers and we were going to still see uh, places of, of real outbreaks which would really hit the numbers. So I think it's it's unsurprising the, the, the location of it is, is just the way it is. But the impact on games, that's, that's up to the GA authorities to try and pick apart and, and what teams are going to be forced to play. We obviously seen for Manor we're being forced to play down in Clare with, with half their team. So... Look, we, we are all stepping into unknown and as to whether the games go ahead, I, I think they still will because if the GA want to claim this elite status, then they'll they'll want to go ahead because essentially it's a test run for what we're likely going to be dealing with each week coming into the big championship games. Yeah, that's that's 100% and also potentially next year as well. Michael Meehan, good morning to you. How are you doing? All good, Ger. How are you? Um, Galway obviously finds itself in a fairly um, difficult situation as well. We kind of learned about that over the last uh, couple of days too where the county champions have had to, for the moment, take a bunch of their players out of the under-20 squad and the senior squad as well. So, again, like, what's everybody feeling? What is the actual belief and sense of, of how Galway are going to be able to deal with this over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, I suppose it's, it's hard to know, really. Um, I would have been a big advocate for, you know, we, we need the championships to run off just for, for all the for all the positivity it can bring into the into the households where people are locked down or people are just fed up um and i would have seen that as, as a great release for the for their end of the year especially as it's you know starting to peak again um further around the county not just up the north and on the border regions so but but just when you see how close it's coming into into everyone's homes and schools and workplaces and as Inda alluded to, how that's going to work out when you when you roll through championship every week or every second week, and the lies that the players, you know, unless they're bubbled and taken away from their work and their family and their colleagues, which can't happen, I, I don't think it can happen. You're you're just going to have it'll be Galway this week, it'll be someone else the next week, where just there'll be there'll be infection within the squads. I know, I think Wexford hurling squad are were tested on mass um, in the last 24 hours or so as well. With respect to COVID-19, so it's very difficult to see where it's going to go and, and how it's going to work. I hope it can work, but I think there's a there's a balance and there's a call to be made eventually on this. And 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 eventually, I mean, you know, it has. I'm sure they're looking at it closely already. 
So if, if put yourself in, in the mind of a player at the moment, um, what, what would you like to happen, Michael, if you were in the Galway squad at the moment and there was a possibility for the games to go ahead? Would you like those games to go ahead if, it was, if you felt like it was safe to do so? Um, if I felt it was safe to do, to, do so, yeah. And if, if I was a player of, of, a, of a certain age, um, you know, a, a player in their early uh, kind of years um, as, a, as a college student or whatever, you know, just living in, living in town and just living with the mates, that, that's one thing. Or if you're back home in your locality and you have family of your own and you're near your grandparents, there's a different set of decisions, you know, kind of coming into play there. But, you know, typically, I think, the vast majority of players will will want this to go ahead, but I'm I've no doubt everywhere there are players who have family members, um, or maybe girlfriends or partners, you know, who are compromised and and it's a very difficult thing. Then it's it's are we going to see any of them walking away from a panel on the back of that if it goes ahead? We're we're probably not, but it's a very very unfair and unfortunate situation for players to be put into, in my mind. Well, that's that's a really good question. Right? Look, I, I know you've got to go to work, so I'll just ask you this one last question. I, yeah. I understand that the whole bubble that the NBA put everybody in is a completely ludicrous comparison for us to make, and likewise the NFL with their massive squads and massive amounts of money. But what they both did do was they allowed players to opt off and nobody batted an eyelid. Nobody thought, oh, you've let down the county, you've let down the team, you've let down the club. It was like, fair enough. Everybody completely understands that Everybody has individual health to make. Some people it was around the health of their children. Some people it was yeah. around underlying health conditions of people in their households. And everybody just went, okay, I, like that's totally fair. We understand. Is there, a, is there a model there that would be like, anybody who doesn't want to play, we're not going to hold any grudge. We're not going to bear any, um, any sense of responsibility on the team not, not, not winning this year if you don't play. And then let the people who do want to play and who are in scenarios play so it's a, it's diminished but it's something yeah on and and even at that if it is if, if things can run and as i said I, I really hope they do but it's just it's kind of, out of our, outside of our control um it, there will be a certain element of that is diminished first of all that it's you know it's it's, it's put into this kind of you know uh two month block um however i think that's going to bring a huge level of excitement on the back of that but going back to the point that you're making um I, I, I would love if I and I'd love if the players that are that we're talking about here, you know, can step away, you know, and, and, and not feel, you know, feel like they're letting anybody down. But it's 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 as much I, I don't know, are we ready for that, Joe or um Ger? If if you think about it, like think about and I I know I'm going way off here in a tangent and this is a discussion maybe for another day, but like uh, the, how many of the population um, are gay versus how many of the known GA footballers or hurlers are gay? And 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 well, you have to ask why, you know. So it, there's, a, there's an element of that coming into this, um, just just not wanting to be maybe the first or not not wanting to be, um, you know, stepping outside of of the, the norm. And um, but it's it's so serious, you know, when you when you see it, even for Inda and his family there, and I hope everyone is okay. And I'm about to go into school here with with 600 odd teachers, um, students and teachers, and you know, it's just everyone is doing their bit. In fairness, I have to say, everyone is doing their bit. But but you know, you you've got to ask the questions when it goes to a certain level. If it's safe, I, if I was a player and if I felt it was fairly safe and I wasn't compromising anyone around me, I would want this to go ahead. You know, I would want this to go ahead. Um, if I was a player who was maybe you know compromised with, with family members or whatever else it was, I would have found it difficult not to stay involved and, and represent my county. And that's right. I don't know what decision I would have made on the back of that, Joe or uh, Ger. I'm calling you Joe all morning. Sorry. No, look, that's fine. We let you get school, Michael, and oh. I think that's the crux of it, really. Um, you know, the comparison is, a, is an excellent one to make. It, it's so difficult for people to step out and to and to put their hand up. And, and in fairness, Mickey Quinn did it um, at the weekend. He stepped away from Longford because they've got a new baby and Enda, you know, like that, he's making the point that, um, and I don't want to put words in his mouth again because he hasn't spoken to us yet, but he, the Longford manager came out and said, look, he's just going to concentrate on, on uh, being a new parent. And we all know how difficult that is uh, at, at, uh, at any stage in your life. So um, is there some way of making it okay for players to opt out? Like, is that, is that where the GPA need to come in and say, we're not en masse saying this has to stop? Or maybe that's what the GPA have to come out and say, look, the players don't want this to happen. I don't know. Yeah, well, for me, I suppose it is, as Michael was saying, it's two very different scenarios. If, if I was still...
playing now and I was in my situation with a young family, I'd probably still feel fine to go on out and play. If I was living at home with my parents, who are obviously older and have their own health concerns, it comes with age, I'd feel pretty dodgy about going on a team bus for the weekend halfway down the country to to, to play a match. That That's just a natural a difference from and my parents are much more nervous than anybody is in this house even though we're we're sitting here with uh, a wee year that, that that is positive everybody thankfully absolutely uh, fine but in terms of people having the freedom just to pull out the the ga would like to think that that is always there anyway that anybody can pull out and we see players pull out for various reasons careers or or uh, studies or any world travels or what, whatever it is that they want to do and, and we, we like to think that, that there is never a pressure there but look any player knows that you have a responsibility to the team and the better player you are the more responsibility you feel to that team and in the back of some teams' minds, certainly the higher level teams' minds, they know that this is going to be a strange all Ireland and with a strange all Ireland it might be somebody other than Dublin, which suddenly makes other people sort of prick up their ears and think, Well well maybe this is the year actually to, to stick in with this. But in terms of the bigger question, uh, I I done an article the other week on it and I th- I think these early games, I think they're all I can see how they can occur with, with a minimal level of risk to the local population. But uh, like John Horn, about a month ago, John Horn was was on the was on the radios and that, and and complimenting how successful the club campaigns had been. So many games, supporters at games, and not one incident for many games. And that was the week before the county finals all broke out. And then we seen the natural consequence of having great sport in action, great success, and the need for people to celebrate and the inability to control them celebrations. So we're talking about starting the National League. There's going to be no issue with that. There's going to be no massive celebrations at the end of that. But what comes at the end of an All-Ireland Championship, especially one played a week or two before Christmas, if Mayo win that All-Ireland, uh, like, there is an obvious public health risk to Mayo winning the All-Ireland this year a week or two before Christmas and with coronavirus still very much out there. Are we going to tell everybody to just stay at home and, and be happy in, in their own homes? You know, the, we're, we're playing an All-Ireland Championship. The final is technically going to be a couple of weeks before Christmas. You know, there's an obvious consequence to that. Uh, that is not going to be controllable. The, the quest, the, then it comes back to the why. Why are we doing it? Why are we so insistent about going ahead and playing it? I, like everybody else, can't wait for the weekend. Can't wait to sit down and watch Jerome Donegal to, for for an hour and a half, be able to forget about things and have a bit of distraction. But uh, where's can I, the why can I, in this? Can I actually just... That is a really interesting point to tease out. One of the reasons to go ahead with this is that ultimately we don't know when there is going to be a vaccination. And so... We, we need to begin to learn to live with COVID and the repercussions of it. So how do we actually do that? Yeah. Look, I, I would follow the, the opinion of what we're doing with COVID is, is you see a huge disparity between where people are. I think the majority of probably working age people are, are in a position, we, we need to just live with this and get on with this. But there's older, frail people in the society are thinking, right, well, that's just you thinking we, we need the jobs over our lives. And that's been dramatic on it. But people are feeling like that out there. I've spoken to plenty of patients who are really apprehensive about everything that's coming in. And there's a huge disparity between people. So for me, society is still grappling with that question. And to be honest, I'm exactly in the same boat as you. I think that's where we're going to end up with. I don't see... I don't see us having a definite vaccine, and if even if we do have a vaccine, say coming out of America or coming out of a Russia or coming out of a China or wherever, are you going to see mass uptake of that? So does it really change the playing field a, a, a huge amount? I'm not really sure. So I think it's understandable that politicians have sort of dropped that little uh, thing that we're, we need the vaccine, we need the vaccine. I think that's not going to be the cure-all. So we're going to hit March and April, and are we going to be in a very different situation? I don't know, but I think in time, society is going to be in a position where they are going to move on maybe together and accept that we'll have to live with this. But at this stage, heading into this winter, I don't think that's, I don't think that's where we're at. So we can't suddenly just jump to that position. I think we might eventually get there. So we're not uh, ready. That's but the... I, I, I don't think we're there yet, and I think the politicians know that. I, and I think that's why the politicians aren't coming out with that. They, they don't want to be the people that come out with saying, right, 
let's let's let let's just roll the dice and and, and go with this. And do you think that Ulster counties are at a disadvantage when it comes to the All Ireland series this year, or even league games in between Ulster counties and the rest? Like teams in like Kerry, Cork, Munster teams, like they've had, I guess, less of a restriction placed on them in recent weeks. Does that bring an advantage on the pitch? I think it, look, the, the the more tight games you have, the the, the more fifty fifty tosses of a coin that you have to go through until you get to the big matches in Croke Park the more likely you're going to lose one of them. So I think there's a disadvantage there. There is a massive advantage, however, of getting match practice and getting momentum behind you. Uh, Dublin, realistically, could be at reaching into an Ireland semi-final still fairly cold and, and still fairly untested. Is that massively different than any other year? I don't know. Uh, for the Ulster counties, certainly it's going to be a very difficult championship to win and there is only one winner this year. Usually Ulster was fairly well represented by the time of sort of the quarterfinal series. Uh, you had a strong number of teams there. Well, there's only going to be one team making the All-Ireland semi-final. Uh, so, yes, there is that natural natural disadvantage in terms of just numbers. That has always been there and that we're, we're, we're well used to giving out about. But I think for the teams involved this year, the fact that there's no Super 8, the fact that there's no quarterfinal, the fact that if you win your province, you're straight to an Ireland semi-final, I think them teams will be happy enough with that. Uh, the fact with the winter football, everything's going to be up in the air with teams in such a sort of a raw state of tune. I think everything's going to be up in the air with the Dublin change in management and loss of a player or two. Uh, I think they're seeing for the first time that there might be a real chance there along with the winter football and everything else. And so, yes, Ulster has its traditional disadvantage if you're looking purely that there can only be one team uh, coming out of that. But at the same stage, Cork or Kerry have a pretty tricky opener there against Cork uh, with, with them being pulled together. Galway, Mayo, Roscommon are on collision courses in Connacht. So there's plenty of teams have tricky enough affairs. Ulster has maybe one additional game which will be tricky and tight uh, com compared to them others. But uh, for the match practice it brings, for the team that comes out of that, they'll 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 be in a fairly good place to be. So we we do like giving out about it, but we also like pointing to the fact that we're the strongest province. So we we, we can't really have our cake and, and 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 eat it this time around. It's a balance. It's a balancing act. Uh, last question for you then. On balance, do you think we'll have a championship? Uh, I believe the GA is very determined and I think they will go on ahead and, and have a championship. The, the, this elite status thing, realistically, if if they are treating sports like that, is there going to be any circumstance in terms of numbers that that dramatically changes? I'm not sure. Uh, I think, are we going to have a decent championship where teams can play fully against each other or is it going to be a, a soap opera each week in terms of who's out and who's in and what clubs are out and what clubs are in in terms of panels? I think, unfortunately, that's going to be the championship we're going to have. Uh, and the again, the value of that and the real need for that is, is still something I'm questioning. But while I question that on one side, I can't wait for the action to begin on the other side. So I'm just hoping and beyond hoping maybe, as, as, as long as we have a bit of hope, uh, I suppose we may take that at this stage. Yeah, the, that's the, the conflict that we all feel, I think. Um, Owen referred to it as guilt a little bit earlier on. And we hope that your daughter gets well really soon and that uh, everybody oh, in the house... <laughs> she's absolutely fine and blissfully unaware of, of, of the crap storm that she's let off. But sure, uh, it's, it's all good. Thankfully, we're all good. Well, it's been great to talk to you again. Thanks a million. All the best, Jer. Bye-bye. <laughs>